Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and we have John Laurence. I love saying his name. It's so much fun. He has been on our podcast before and if you haven't listened to some of his past episodes, he's so good and all of you keep asking for us to have him back because he is a wealth of knowledge. John, welcome back. Oh my gosh, Chantel, thanks for having me. What is this, like number four or five? Yes, everyone loves all of your wisdom and you always bring your A-game. So I want to hear what you're most excited about right now. Well, I have been really, I think, I I feel like I kind of nailed this trifecta that what's so exciting about it too is that it's something people can do at home. but it's combining these different um, strategies to enhance how we use oxygen in our body. And utilizing oxygen, particularly in the mitochondria, is really everything. I mean, that's your life force. And so if people want to enjoy uh, a robust, healthy, and be happy, like actually just being happy takes energy, right? Because we all know when we're drag when we're dragging, we have low energy, we're grumpy, right? And irritable. So I think overall the world is just a better place when people have more life force, right? So I'd like to shine some light on this. Um, no pun intended, because um part of this involves light and we're light beings, right? You hear people talking about you know, you go to the crystal shops and like, oh, we're light beings. Everything's light. Well, it really is. And they're not just crazy people saying that. Um, we're, we are light beings and we use light. So photons are the unit of energy and light. And um, electrons are the unit in, um, in matter, like physical matter, right? So a photon is there's literally no matter. It's just energy. And, and, a, and an electron is right supposed to be matter, right? But then quantum physicists, you break it down and it, it, eventually it's all made up of frequencies and light. But, um, but in general, like in the physical world, we have photons that come from the sun. And these photons shower our body. And without this, um, this, the support of the sun besides freezing over, like we wouldn't physically be able to live because we, we thrive on utilizing this, um, this light in our body. And what's so amazing about the sun is that it puts out 52% of near infrared, which is the, it's like kind of warm, right? And that, that sunlight, that heat, it, it penetrates the body and um, near infrared is really what you want if you want to get something like a sauna or you want some sort of like a red light panel or something like that you really want a lot of near infrared the problem is a lot of those led you know the you know the um like the juves and the and we have some we sell too we have the mitolites and they're great but they really don't get too far into your um into your body it's mostly your skin and the blood that's just in your skin um, gets exposed to it. But there's these incandescent lights that um, sauna space makes that we use, and they have 40% near infrared, which is almost as much as the sun. So they're warm. And um, so if, if you get the light into the system, it opens the floodgates for the bodies to start to like move these electrons and to start um, making energy for you. And so for a lot of people that start using um, light therapy, they really start to notice some improvements. They lose weight, their hormones start to balance a little bit better. Um, their immune system gets stronger. Their energy level gets improved. Um, what's, what's really, really exciting though, is combining that light with a substance called methylene blue. Have you been using methylene blue? I haven't. I haven't been. Oh, did we send you some? I I can't remember. I can't remember if you did or not. Okay. Tell we, me tell me the benefits I of don't, this. 
if if we would have, it would have been a suppository. But like you can take methylene blue orally, and um, we we're just seeing some really exciting um, effects with our patients clinically, um, and and when you take it orally, one of the risks is that your mouth turns really blue, right? And nobody really wants their mouth turning blue. So we created these little bars and you break them into pieces and you kind of throw it in the back of your throat and then you can drink something down and then that way your mouth doesn't turn blue. And, um, and so you'll pee blue for a couple of days too. So it, it gets into your system and it's really, really blue. And it was originally um, used as a, um, as a dye where they would dye um, tissues so that when they looked under a microscope, they could see differences between different types, uh, different aspects of the cell and tissues. And, um, and then this doctor was looking for a cure for malaria and he used the stain so that he could see the bacteria and he could observe when they died, when he would add different substances and he wanted to start experimenting with the cure. So he was, as soon as he introduced the stain, the, the, um, the parasite that carried the, the malaria died. So he was like, I found my cure. <laughs> so back to methylene blue. So he found, he found the cure. And what's, what's really amazing is methylene blue, um, not only can be antimicrobial, but it can also um, support energy. And they found this um, after the fact. And um, what happens is that it's so attracted to mitochondria, and that why that's why it was really good to stain like nervous tissue and like nerves and brain and stuff because they have so many mitochondria, so those turn really blue. And um, and so it, the methylene blue gets into the mitochondria and then it acts as an oxidant and an antioxidant. And so it, 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 it donates an electron and it just kicks in this energy cycle. So that life force discussion that we talked about earlier um, is just really accentuated. And, and what's amazing about it is that it works with light, particularly the... Um, uh, red and in, near infrared because that's like in the red spectrum and so methylene blue absorbs um all of the red and it and it reflects the blue right so that's the way when we see things in our world right it's it's what's being um what's being reflected and the opposite's being absorbed so what happens is the photons absorb in and accentuate this energy effect and so this is something that's been highly studied um, they've been looking at it for degenerative neurologic disorder um, frank francisco gonzalez lima is probably one of the most foremost authorities doing research on it and it's just incredible what what this can do for energy and um, we've seen some results with chronic viral infections and um, we actually run it as an iv here but people can do this at home. You know, they can get like a sauna space lamp, you know, with these incandescent lights, you can get like a full, what he he's calls a Faraday cage, which is like an enclosed structure with the lights. Um, and then taking methylene blue and then doing these saunas, not only getting the heat and sweating and detoxing, but you're getting this um, energy activation. Now, if someone actually has a little bit more resources um, some of these soft hyperbaric chambers are about $15,000. If you add that to this program, it is next level. So here at the clinic, we have a, something called a CVAC. You know, we're here in Sarasota, Florida. Um, we have a CVAC, which is like a hyperbaric. It's kind of like this pod. Um, but the combination of those is, um, I mean, that is just about as powerful as I've found at really moving the needle for improving um, mitochondrial function. And what that results in is the body's ability to heal itself. Um, I want to go over a question that we have from a listener, and it's really, really long, but I'm just going to summarize it for you. She says that 
she definitely is very stressed at work and she's over consuming caffeine. Um, but she's waking up every morning like she has an aura ring and it says she's sleeping pretty good, like six or seven hours, but she's waking up and she's exhausted. So that's why she's having to drink so much caffeine to kind of make it through the day. So what are some of the tips that you would say um, that she should do? Well, the the challenge with, you know, caffeine, it, you do more and you do more and you do more and, and it's, 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 um, it's like turning the idle up on your car. You're going to be burning more gas and, um, it, those are your adrenals, right? So your adrenal glands, um, when you push them too much, then it diverts a lot of that energy away from you making hormones, right? So then you start having problems with, um, polycystic ovarian disease and, um, irregular uh, menstrual cycles and weight gain and uh, insulin resistance and all kinds of things like that. So um, we want to kind of keep ourselves within an adaptable stress response, right? So some some like kind of happy medium like mama's porridge. And so um, oftentimes there's there's a lifestyle that people will create which would um, not really be possible without driving themselves a little too hard, right? So definitely looking at different strategies to be more relaxed and regener regenerate your body and repair your, your body so that when you push it with, um, when you're having to go do those things where you would need more rely on the caffeine, you would have more resources to draw from. So instead of saying, hey, try this energy thing or this energy, I would say, let's look at the repair side so that you have more energy reserves you know starting the day and so with that said the best thing i can think of is using high dose melatonin because cortisol is your stress right when you have caffeine you're you're spiking cortisol right so if you're going to just be so heavy on that side but you're not going to support the res restoration on the body on the other side that would be where you're looking at like, um, you know, and melatonin is only two and a half percent absorbed orally. So, you know, like a rectal delivery would be ideal. Um, otherwise, like a liposomal uh, delivery would be something that would be um, would be uh, helpful as well. At some point, we've all been sold a lie, and let me tell you why. In the 80s, we all believed more protein equals more muscle growth. Well, it could be a lie, and let me tell you why. Because if you eat eight ounces of chicken breast, then you're consuming about 40 grams of protein. But just because something contains 40 grams of protein, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna absorb all 40 grams of protein. Because without enzymes, guess what? It could end up all in your toilet bowl because your small intestines can only absorb protein that's been broken down into smaller building blocks called amino acids. So it doesn't matter if you're consuming 30 grams of protein or 300 grams of protein, if you don't have the sufficient supply of enzymes to digest the protein, then guess what? You're gonna be starving for those vital building blocks. So it's really important that you take a high quality enzyme so before you run out and just buy anything, guess what? I love Masszymes by Bi Optimizers because it has five different kinds of proteins and that's what you need, all five of them. So go there, go to masszymes.com slash waste away and use the coupon code waste away 10 and you'll get 10% off. Yeah, so just so you know, you guys know, that is one of the things that I love about the products that they have. And if you go to mitazen.com slash Chantel dash Ray, we need to get our link fixed so that Chantel Ray uh, works as well. But right now it's just Chantel dash Ray. Um, but that I don't think people realize that they're taking all of these supplements and if their gut is in such a bad position that 
the amount that they're able to absorb, doing it through a suppository is sometimes so much better. Talk about that for just a minute. Well, yeah. I mean, I think you and I were kind of talking about, you know, discussing parasites today a bit, which we we could dive into a little bit. Yeah. And just, you know, the whole idea about the gut and how we can have a healthy gut. And um, so again, melatonin can be um, very, very helpful for the gut. And um, when our gut isn't healthy, which a lot of people, um, if you're not actively taking care of your gut, then probably there's some challenges there. Um, you're not going to absorb, right? So when we eat and we take supplements, in general, a lot of the supplements that that we want to take and we want to get it into our body, like CoQ10 or um, NAD or um, curcumin, you know, I mean, just list goes on, or different herbs or different nutrients. There the the oral absorption is not very good because our our mouth has all these enzymes, and then it hits our stomach, and we have acid in our stomach. And then it hits our small intestines where it gets hit with more enzymes. And then it goes through our liver and our liver through first pass really breaks it all down. And so by the time it gets through all that, very, very little finds its way into the bloodstream. Where if you use um, other delivery methods like um, suppositories, the delivery becomes much, much higher where it's more comparable to like an IV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that I personally believe that parasites is one of the biggest hidden cause of so many health problems and nobody will ever talk about it. Most people, you know, don't even want to imagine that they have it, but to me, unexplained digestive issues, fatigue, weakness, anxiety, food cravings, food sensitivities, chronic pain, like to me I think it is that we don't talk about it enough and it is the one of the biggest reasons why people are not feeling good. And so then they don't have, the, they're just, they're just a mess and people aren't talking about it as much. So um, talk a little bit about some of the things that you've prescribed to people or to tell people to do to get rid of the parasites. Well. Um, first of all, yeah, I, that's the first thing that I test for when I first start working with, um, either a patient here at the clinic or a client, one of our distance coaching clients, um, is, is parasites. And so, um, you have liver flukes or you have flukes, you have, um, um, tapeworms, you know, there's, there's different types of beneficial bacteria that, um, find its way into the gut. Um, they call that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So there's a lot of stuff that can kind of go south with the gut that can be really hard to reverse. And um, I found great success with methylene blue can be helpful for some parasites, um, but we'll usually test people to see what um, antimicrobial, there's a lot of Chinese herbs that I like to use. Um, Artemisia is something I use a lot of. Coptis, um, um, oregano. Um, have you tried the Boca Zen? It's like a dropper. It's this is more for the mouth, but it has a lot of the sim like the herbs that I would like for parasites as well, so people can kind of like take it. But um, it's got mer um, moringa, um, ginger, thyme. Thyme is really good for parasites. Ginger. Um, um, are, um, oregano clove is really good. Um, um, and so all of those cin cinnamon is another herb that's in there as well. But, um, you know, the mouth is so important for, um, you know, I call it our doorways, our mouth, our nose and our colon, you know, these are the doorways to the world, uh, that can get infected and hold my micro microbial overgrowth. And then it's not the microbes that are the problem as much as what they outgas, which are called lipopolysaccharides. And these lipopolysaccharides are also called endotoxins. 
And so those endotoxins are incredibly inflammatory and toxic and our body absorbs them and it accumulates in your cells. And this can lead to some real problems with people um, long-term. And it takes kind of a concerted effort to go in and really detox some of these endotoxins out of the cell. So um, we have, um, you know, where we teach people to take care of their doorways, you know, take care of the nasal passage, take care of the, um, the mouth, and then taking care of the colon. <laughs> and part of taking care of the doorways, I think, is a good parasite cleanse, you know, like a nice 30-day parasite cleanse. Mm. But so your routines, um, I love them. They are amazing. And so kind of talk to us a little bit about some of the routines that you are like, this is what I do on a daily or a weekly basis to make sure I'm really at my optimal health. Well, I, the sauna is something I really enjoy. I do that in the morning. Um, and then I'm taking the Lumitol Blue. I take half of one of those bars, which is about 80 milligrams every day. And I do um, high-dose melatonin. And half. what does that do for you? Well, it, it, it uplifts my mood. Um, methylene Blue is also shown in research, large human trials that it's great for like mood well it's been able to reverse depression uh clinically so you get kind of a, a mood uplifting ability to it and then energy um just overall uh brain works better uh memory you know cognition um and then on my way to work i do um, an antimicrobial nasal spray i keep it in my car it's called glutostat this is something else that we make um it's kind of spicy, you know, but you can feel it working. You spray it up the nose. And then um, I do the gluta, um, the Boca Zen. So I take a half a drop and I put it in the mouth. I use my tongue. I move it all around. And I take a toothpick all around. And, and then, so that keeps my gums and my oral cavity like super healthy. Um, I make yogurt, which is really great. There's a yogurt recipe that we have that we can share with you and your listeners. It's called ProBioZen yogurt. Mm. Really easy to make too. So tell us about it. How do you do it? Well, you buy this yogurt, yogurt maker and um, you take, um, I like to make the coconut because I don't really think dairy is great for you. And um, so you, you put in like a thickener and then you put all of these very specific beneficial bacteria that are more rare. They're, they're not really commercially available, especially in the numbers that you're going to grow with the yogurt. Like you just can't buy this. So, um, so then you put the, the strains of bacteria in there, you put some honey. I, I use honey as that's the nutrient that the um, bacteria are going to grow on. So then you put it in the yogurt maker and you let it ferment for about 36 hours. Then you transfer it into some containers, put it in the fridge and it is like delicious. Mm. I love that. Okay. What else do you do on the regular? Mm. Well, um, do you ever, you ever hear rebounding? Yes, for sure. So, so a couple things I really like for lymphatics are skin brushing, which is really good to do before you go into the sauna anyway. And like you get a, a, like a stiff, firm brush and you really brush like every part of your body, right? And until it kind of gets red and boy, you feel really good when you do that. Um, and it also gets rid of a lot of the dead skin on your, um, on your on the surface of your skin. Um, so I like doing that. Rebounding is really good. Those little um, trampolines that you can get. That you do that for a while and it's really good breath work um yesterday i took a friend to the beach and i have um wim hof's app so you can get this app on um on apple store and it's wim w-i-m-h-o-f and he has some exercises you have to sign up for it it's about 30 something dollars a year or something and um and he takes you through these breaths and then you hold your breath and then you breathe it again and you kind of set exactly what you want to do but um it's it's really beautiful you feel 
super calm and relaxed and and it um, it's really really good for your health and you, it moves your lymphatics as well um, i think this should be something everybody should utilize in their routine really at least a few times a week of the actually waking up in the morning if you can if you can kind of get into it um, doing some Wim Hof breaths as kind of part of your meditation, your morning meditation, I think is really epic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, and I do, I do the sauna probably four or five days a week. I do the red light therapy about four to five days a week. And I do the, I probably do the rebounder only a couple times a week. If that, I need to do that rebounder more. Mm -hmm. I have recently gotten some swelling in my lymph nodes like all through here and so i'm wondering what i'm doing that it, there, there's got to be some kind of infection or something going on there that this is kind of swelling up right through here but i think anything else that kind of moves the lymph nodes to kind of get get you detoxing yeah you know like if you were to get um you know, like these sauna space lamps that that could be really good to put on here to just drive those photons in there. And if you had some methylene blue, well, it sounds like we need you to get set up with it to try it. Cause I think you really like it. Um, you know, I mean, that's, it's like, I, I like to empower people to do things at home that would be almost like going to a clinic, you know, cause too often, you know, what's really available, I think to most individuals is is not really uh something that's and i don't know that that's the government really wants you know and especially the pharmaceutical companies they don't really want people to be empowered so much you know but some of these things we're talking about here are extremely powerful which you also need to keep that in mind you know that they can be quite powerful and when you start with something like this you should probably have some sort of a health coach or um, um, healthcare practitioner that's helping you with it. Let's talk about fasting and some of the products that you have on, if you go to mitazon, mitazen.com slash Chantel dash Ray, I want you to talk about the fasting support on there and what what does that help with exactly when somebody's fasting? Well, I think one of the the main things that we want to do when we fast is we want to clear those dysfunctional cells, right? So that's the point of fasting is where your body cleans and recycles, right? So then when we start to feed, then we produce stem cells, our microbiome re replenishes itself. And we have this um, the stem cell release, right? So we have this regeneration. So we want to support both of those. And so what I've found is there's senolytics. There's, so senescence is what you want. You want something that clears senescent cells, which those are the cells that are old and need to be recycled. And we do that through a process called autophagy, which in Greek it means self-eating, autophagy. And so there's synolytics that um, like sterile still bean from strawberries and um, I'm sorry, sterile still bean is from blueberries and physotin is from strawberries. And um, these, these synolytics along with fasting can shorten the amount of time that you need to fast because you're supporting that system a lot more, right? To kind of get rid of these old cells. So that product is called Lucitol and Lucitol's got a lot of, you know, curcumin, green tea extract, um, quercetin, and it's extremely, it's an anti-inflammatory, um, a lot of anti-inflammatory herbs. And it's also settles down a lot of inflammation in the brain. Um, it quenches a lot of that type of neuro, um, inflam inflammation, um, especially if somebody's had like a traumatic brain injury or if they're doing a lot of contact sports where they hit their head, like this is probably something that they should just be taking all the time. But what's so unique about it is that it's in a suppository because these things just don't absorb orally. You, you can't get it in your system very, very poorly. I mean, 
you look up curcumin, you know, it's very, very poorly absorbed. Um, so, and then with the refeeding side where you want to like grow and repair, um, we have, um, deer antler velvet and rhodiola and, um, and leucine and something called, um, 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 HMB, right? So all of these things really support growth. And so if you look at, um, things that can kind of accentuate and allow you to have a stronger signaling from the activity. So when I say signaling, I'm meaning like support your body's response to, right? So I fast because I want X, right? So, okay. I want more X, then I'm going to need more signaling for the fasting in order to get more X, right? Um, and so that's going to be synolytics. And so after the fast, you want more growth and you want more repair and you want more stem cells. You've got to give more signaling. And that signaling comes from these different substances, but also a high protein diet. So we have all that actually written out in an article um, we should link to the Fast Track Fast article. Got it. So for people who have never used a suppository or um, there are nutrients and vitamins, any tips on how to do it a little bit easier or, you know, because I mean, honestly, I would say if you ask the average person, if you said, you know, how many times have you used, put a vitamin, used a suppository for a vitamin or for nutrients or for, you know, Ginkgo, ginkgo or resveratrol or any of these things, the majority of the people would say no. So just walk us through any tips on doing that. Well, it's really, it's so, you know, when I first was told to try suppositories, I was like, no way. And um, what happened was I, I got, I was actually fairly ill with Lyme disease. Right. And so I was desperate. And I was like, Oh, I'll do anything. So, okay. Suppository, no problem. Um, but it was the results and it was a glutathione suppository. It was the results that really got my attention. I was like, wow, I woke up and I actually felt halfway human. And so that was my first exposure to it. And then of course we started to formulate, um, um, other suppositories outside of, um, the glutathione over time, mitosin. And, uh, but you know, it, it's very popular in Europe and here in the United States, I think we've been sheltered from a lot of things. It's just our, you know, pharmaceutical industry and the way that they, um, they, they, they hand feed everybody, you know, what they want you to know. And so suppositories, um, they're, 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 they're actually fairly regularly used in the U S I mean, a lot of elderly are given them because they have poor absorptions. They might put their, their pain medications in suppositories, um, because a lot of times they can't handle it in their digestive tract. So it's, it's actually really common. And so for someone that's never done it and they're kind of like on the fence post with it, it's really not that big of a deal. You know, it takes like a couple of seconds. You don't even really know it's there. It kind of dissolves. And you'll get over it really soon once you feel the results of that compared to other things that you've tried. Yeah. So if someone puts it, let's say, in the refrigerator, let's say you keep keep it in the refrigerator, do you suggest putting it at room temperature or keeping it in the refrigerator? What do you suggest for that? Well, or does it matter? It's it's organic palm oil that's the base, so it stays fairly hard in room temperature. Um, when you start getting over eighty degrees, then you know then it starts to get really kind of soft. But at like a normal room temperature, at like seventy seven, seventy six, something like that, um, it it it's easy to insert. It doesn't really get so soft that it doesn't. It's not easy to work with. Um, and if you take it out of the refrigerator. Um, it's, it's totally easy to insert. Um, so, and, and, you know, either way, most people don't even know it's there within like a couple of seconds and go along their, their, their business. Right. So you can, let's say you wanted to do an IV 
of um, NAD, right? So everybody's talking about these NAD drips, right? And they take a they take a while to drip because you feel a little bit uncomfortable. But versus if you do, if you have to sit there and you have to go to a doctor, you have to sit there get the IV. Where the like the NAD Max suppository, you put it in and you go about your business, and it's actually more NAD than most clinics will run. And a lot of clinics are charging a thousand dollars for something like this. So you know, the NAD you can't find me uh, melatonin in, in in an IV even if you wanted to, but it's not practical to do that every night. Um, we have a methylation um, suppository that's really epic, which is B vitamins and active folate, and it's got the um, tetrahydra um, folate in there, the active form and uh, and it's got a lot of other really, really special herbs that really help with methylation. Methylation is just, you know, everybody's talking about methylation, right? I mean, methylation is really key to having a strong, healthy brain. Um, it's also really key to having good hormones and, and um, weight, you know, healthy weight, um, your, your insulin sensitivity, you know, um, aging in general. Uh, and methylation are very closely connected. So um, methylators are really, really hard to absorb orally. I mean, that's why people go and get B12 shots and things like that. So to have this in a suppository is like pretty nice, right? Well, I think the NAD and and tell us a little bit about what NAD is for. Um, but I think what you just said, I can't emphasize that enough. I know um, we have a local place here and they charge like literally between $600 and $1,000 for the IV for the NAD. So it's massive amounts of money for you to do those NAD treatments because you have to do multiple ones. They actually make you come in the morning when no one else is there um, because the what they say is that because NAD can cause like stomach cramping and stuff like that for the IV, they don't want you to be there during regular IV times. So they char they have to basically do it in the mornings or after they're closed and they're extremely expensive. Um, so talk a little bit about what the benefits of NAD are and why um, you are seeing yeah. benefits from well, it. That what's what's gotten all the press is um nad's ability to slow aging and extend life you know and that's where um the research kind of has shown and so then we know that from a chemistry standpoint that it's a rate limiting substance with us to make energy so that whole conversation we had about life force earlier um if our nad levels are depleted then we're going to have more of a difficult time, you know, making those, making that energy and things that are big NAD depleters or stressors, especially lack, lack of sleep, um, drugs and alcohol on the top of the list. Um, if we're running, um, like probably that lady that asked the question earlier about alternatives to caffeine, um, if we're running ourselves really, really hard. Um, we're going to be depleting our NAD levels. So we're going to want to replenish those. And um, it's it's shown to really enhance that 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 ability to make energy, which then translates into all of those things that we talked about earlier, where you're going to just be living and be healthier and happier. So so let me, from what I understand, that the primary role of NAD is basically to transfer energy from one cell to another. So it's how we convert energy like from our food into cellular energy. Is that right? Am I explaining that right? Well, so there's there's this gradient inside our mitochondria and this gradient helps to move um, electrons. And so the con the conversion of NAD to NAD um, H is is like critical for this, right? And so when we start running low in NAD, we can't make this conversion. And so um, 
it's it's fundamentally part of the machinery for us to take oxygen and glucose and turn it into something called ATP, which then fuels everything in our body. Mm. Got it. Well, this has been great. We are out of time. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Sure. So you can find me on Instagram at your out of box doc. And then clinic is um, advanced rejuvenation.us. Love it. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. 